Stay calm. That's the message from Virginia Beach city leaders after mosquitoes carrying West Nile virus were found here. The virus can turn serious in some people who contract it. 13 News Now reporter Chinuha found out what the city is doing to control the problem. On a day like today in the King's Grant neighborhood in Virginia Beach, you can't really tell that there are many mosquitoes or that there's even a problem. But according to Virginia Beach city officials, this is one of three neighborhoods in the city where they've seen an increase in West Nile virus activities. And of course, city officials are telling people what they can do to keep themselves safe from mosquitoes and from the West Nile virus. For example, when it comes to clothing, wear something that's long sleeve or light in color, and also insect repellent. Adults use something with 50% DEET or less for children, 30% or less. The city is also suggesting if you have anything outside, such as bins or buckets that can collect water, make sure those are turned over. If you have a bird bath or a wading pool, make sure those are cleaned once a week. The other neighborhoods are North Witch Duck Road in Kempsville and Constitution Drive in Pembroke. Drew Lankford with Public Works says this isn't uncommon. These neighborhoods historically have had West Nile positives. From now till probably the end of October uh, is going to be really busy with all this. So, you know, what we're telling people is uh, there's nothing to set your, uh, set your hair on fire about. Crews will be spraying the neighborhoods at night and clearing drains to reduce the number of breeding sites. They're even checking places like uh, horse pastures and places like that, uh, open areas. We're checking all the parks. The biology lab will continue to monitor and test mosquitoes and keep an eye on the West Nile virus. In Virginia Beach, Chinoo Hurt, 13 News Now. Virginia Beach is not the first place locally to have mosquitoes with West Nile virus this summer. Norfolk City leaders recently found mosquitoes carrying the virus in several neighborhoods. Fairmont Park, Lafayette Shores, Norfolk Industrial Park, and Edgewater. And not too long ago, mosquitoes in Suffolk tested positive for the disease. They were found in the Riverview and Azalea Acres areas. All of the cities in Hampton Roads test mosquitoes and have mosquito control efforts in place. Right now, the Lesnar Bridge in Virginia Beach has reopened after a deadly crash. Police say a motorcyclist was heading west over the bridge, lost control of the bike and crashed. First responders worked to save him, but they were unable to. He died at the scene. Police say speed and alcohol may have been factors in this crash. The westbound lanes of the bridge were closed for more than three hours. We will keep you updated as we learn more information. Now, this is the third deadly crash involving a motorcycle in Virginia Beach just this week. Late last night, a motorcyclist and moped driver died when they collided. Police say the motorcyclist was racing the driver of an SUV when the crash happened. The SUV driver, a teenager, is behind bars facing charges tonight. And earlier this week, police say a motorcyclist was speeding down Virginia Beach Boulevard and crashed into a car. The motorcycle driver, Sharice Brooks, was killed. Police tell us the car was turning onto Wexford Drive, but overturned. Two people inside were rushed to a hospital with what authorities are calling life-threatening injuries. It is unclear how they are doing tonight. Two at 11. A local Sam's Club is cleaning out its regular grade gas pumps right now because they had diesel fuel in them. It happened at the Western Branch location in Chesapeake. Some customers say they've noticed problems with their cars after filling up there. Spokesperson for the Sam's Club tells us the company found out about the problem this morning. She told us the affected tank serves other businesses, not just Sam's. We don't know what other businesses those are. Sam's Club has shut down the pumps while they clean them out. If you filled up there and got diesel instead of gas and your car is having a problem, contact management at Sam's Club. Tonight, the man police believe shot six people over the July 4th holiday weekend at the oceanfront is back behind bars. A judge denied Ladarius Trisvin bond this morning. Police say he is the man walking by in this surveillance video. He was shot just seconds before someone started shooting into a crowd. But the video doesn't show who pulled the trigger. Trisvin is charged with malicious wounding and other crimes. The six people who were hurt are all out of the hospital now. We've learned new information about the man whose body was found in a Virginia Beach lake last week. 19-year-old Jairo Sanchez Guardado's mom says he immigrated from El Salvador two years ago. She tells 13 News Now police told her he had been shot. Officers are considering his death to be suspicious. 
Kayakers found the body last week on the shoreline of Lake Smith, Lake Lawson nature area. There is an online fundraiser set up to help send Guardado's body home to El Salvador. And we have a link posted on our website, 13newsnow.com. Right now, Newport News Police are looking for leads in a shooting from last month that just turned deadly. We are told 39-year-old Orvin Wilson died yesterday. Police tell us someone shot him several times early in the morning on June 15th near his home on Fairfax Avenue. Investigators have not released any information about a suspect. If you know of anything that can help police solve this case, call the crime line. Now that shooting happened in the Cottage Grove neighborhood where police officers went door to door this afternoon. They weren't looking for any suspects. Instead, they were just looking to say hello. It's all part of the new chief's goal to be proactive in the community. 13 News Now reporter Robert Boyd was there. Robert. Well, Regina, this is the second time Chief Steve Drew has done this sort of thing in less than a month on the job, and it definitely won't be the last. He says he wants residents to get to know his officers on a personal level, which he says will go a long way to fighting crime. What do I got over here? Newport News Police Chief Steve Drew, along with dozens of fellow officers, okay walked the Cottage Grove neighborhood Friday, a place that has been plagued by violence in recent years. But I think it's important uh, to get out here and, and meet the citizens, the ones that we're supposed to be serving and protecting, and that's what I tried to accomplish today. One of those residents Chief Drew met was six-year-old Jariah, who was shot in the leg by a stray bullet during a cookout last month. I didn't want, I just wanted to bother you. I just wanted to come check on you, make sure you were doing okay. How are you doing? Chief Drew said often residents are too afraid to go to police, so why not bring the police to them? This is like a Norman Rockwell painting in this neighborhood. It's beautiful. So what are the issues, right? Citizens just need to know that we care about them. The chief also said the presence of all these men and women in uniform sends a message to criminals as well. We're not going to tolerate individuals coming into this community and preying on these good citizens and disrupting their lives, wreaking violence and havoc here. Deborah McGill Jackson told the chief sometimes she's afraid to walk from her car to her front door. And you move quickly, you move faster, you get to your door as quickly as you can. Fellow resident Lorenzo Anderson spoke with officers on his front porch about what he believes can be done better. I see the police during the daytime, but I don't see them at night. You know what I'm saying? And that's usually when our young folks are getting killed or shot at. For the most part, residents said today's visit by PD is a step in the right direction. Officers even took time to sing a young lady happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, sweetie. All right. Now, police also spent a lot of time teaching residents how they can report crimes and tips while also remaining anonymous. Police say if there is teamwork between the community and officers, everyone will be a lot safer. Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. Looking ahead, be prepared to hear lots of jet noise. The Navy says it'll be doing more air operations over the next week. Pilots have to fulfill training requirements. So if you live in Chesapeake, say, near the Naval Auxiliary Landing Field at Fentress, you'll definitely hear the jets. We're told fighter pilots from NAS Oceana will be there practicing landings until as late as 2 in the morning on some days. Locally based members of the Virginia National Guard are mobilizing for federal active duty. These are some of those soldiers getting ready for training. In November, about 70 soldiers from Virginia Beach's 529th Combat Sustainment Support Battalion will be leaving for the Middle East. They'll offer logistical support. This is the battalion's third federal active duty deployment since it became federally recognized in 2009. Developing tonight in Portsmouth, city leaders say the main stage and sitting area at the Union Bank and Trust Pavilion is ready to go for the upcoming concerts. That despite a large crack in one of the main support masts, we're told the roof will be removed for the shows beginning with next Friday's Avid Brothers concert, but the space will be open. Just today, the slightly stupid concert was moved to the pavilion's waterfront plaza because of the ongoing problem. City engineer said water got into a column that froze, and that is what caused the crack. Taking a live look right now over 264 at Newtown Road. The traffic pattern here is about to change as crews work to improve the 264-64 interchange. Take a look at your screen. This affects eastbound traffic, exit 15A, which put you on Newtown toward Kempsville Road will close Sunday night. It should reopen Monday morning, but at that point, the other exit at Newtown will close until next year. 
All traffic will take 15A and can either turn left or right onto Newtown Road. That's because crews will be demolishing and replacing the existing exit ramp.